Thank you, choir. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. It is the day that you have made, and we rejoice, and we are glad in it. We pray, O oh Lord, that what has begun today will last in the name of Jesus. We pray that they will not regret this in the name of Jesus. Under no circumstance would they have any reason to repeat this in the name of Jesus. If Jesus tarries, they will both grow all together in the name of Jesus. In the short time that we have to look into your word, we pray that you will minister to us yourself in Jesus' name. Let this word ruminate in our hearts. Let it germinate. Let it turn our lives around in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the living Jesus. So, please be seated. Quickly, one of the things we understand that on a wedding day like this, there's no point talking for too long. You've gone through counseling. And sometimes, it's mostly those who have come for the wedding that listen to the sermon. Once you start talking too much, the couple is not ready to listen to anything. Their mind is already somewhere else. And in some cases, I, well, you know, some of us too have been there. Like, you, you this man, talk and just let's go. This thing that we've been waiting for all along, you're talking too much. So we won't be talking too much today. Quickly, I'll preach on something I've titled, Giving Without Holding Back. Giving without holding back. Please, I'd like the couple to say after me, giving without holding back. While it's going to be very short, I'm hoping that for the rest of your marriage, you will remember this. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What was it that he gave? His only begotten son. Now, what that also tells us is that giving is the proof of love. When the Bible says, for God so loved, that he gave. It was the loving that preceded the giving. So you need to understand that it is possible to give without loving, but it is not possible to love without giving. Once you claim you love somebody, the next most important thing that will show up is how you give and what you give. Now, this quickly reminds me of 14 years ago when I was sent to go and serve my father's land. And, you know, God has a way of compensating me. So I met this beautiful lady, and I, I'm very sincere. I'm confessing I had nothing in mind. It just happened to be that this lady was in a dormitory where she had been robbed, and I had a spare phone, and her phone had been stolen, and I was just compassionate in my heart. Oh, how would this beautiful lady now communicate with her family? So I took a spare phone and gave to her. I'm confessing I had no bad intention because I didn't even ask for her phone number. But you know, I was a popular jingo on camp. I was in what they call the orientation broadcasting service. So she came looking for me by herself. Long story short, two years later, she married me and we now have three kids. <laughs> but it was just an innocent giving. And the giving today, you know, one small, guess what, guess what kind of phone I gave in those days? Tonosobe, Nokia, touch lights. But it wasn't about the value of what was given, it was the gesture. So something I should have been running after came after me. <laughs> so you need to understand that giving is very important. You have just begun a journey of giving. You, need, you will keep giving to yourselves, you keep giving to one another, you cannot stop giving until Jesus comes. And that's what marriage is about, it's about giving. So if you don't understand that the basis of marriage is giving, you may miss a very, very important point. So what are those things that you must give? Because I won't be speaking for too long. Number one, you must give each other attention. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 4, there is a time, sorry, Philippians 2 4, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. So give what? Attention. Pay attention to each other. Pay attention to what this person wants. Don't assume you always know. Ask. Find out what it is. And notice when something is changing. Number two, give a, to give attention, you must have time. You must give time. It is somebody that you are giving time to that you can pay attention to their details. For the men, for, for example, some of you don't even know when your wife has changed her hairstyle. Some of you don't even know when she's putting on a little weight. Some of you don't even know when something has changed. When I was growing up, my pastor taught me that when you get to church, you act like you, see, you didn't see your wife when you both left the house. So when you now get to church, say, ah, now you be this. 
Wow, I hit a jackpot. See beauty. But you would only be able to pay attention to that kind of detail because you are also spending time together. I also even need to repent a little because when we started, I used to play Scrabble with my wife. So find something that, you know, helps you spend that time together. Number three, give each other your resources. Don't do that thing of this one is mine, this one is your own. You have been joined together, now you have become one. Whatever each one owns belongs to both of you. Whatever you own, it doesn't matter who owns it now, it is now for both of you. So give each other your resources without holding back. My wife knows there is nothing I own. If she wants it, I can give it, so long as I have it. Everything that you own belongs to each other now, so give each other your resources. The next thing is give each other, each other your bodies. You read, you read in the Bible, give, the body is no longer your own. It is no longer what? Please say to yourself, this body is no longer your own. It's no longer your own. Give each other your body. And how do you give each other your body? First of all, of course, you know, we talk about, oh, you see, sometimes young people who are not married think that the only thing married people do is, you know, have sex, play around and stuff like that. It's until you marry, you are married, you have to go to work, you have to take care of children. You now realize that, man, expectation is different from reality. But one of the things you can still do is that once you realize that this body is not mine, you can still find ways around it. Now that you are married, don't stop dating. Don't stop dating. The way you are dancing, smiling, whatever it is that you did that made you, you know, smile, blush, keep doing This is the time to increase it. Brother Larry, when she's cooking in the kitchen, don't stay in the city room watching TV. Walk into the room, I mean, walk into the kitchen. That's the time to do some spanking. If you see her parading in front of you, see, we are giving you the code now. You see her parading in front of you. Nothing is lost. She just stands in front of the TV. She is looking for your attention. She walks back in something that looks extremely short. Just follow her. There's nothing you are doing in the sitting room. Every other thing must wait. So give, uh, give each other your bodies. The next thing is give each other support. That support is so crucial. You may go through a phase in your lives where one person would need more support than the other. Make sure that whoever needs the support at that point, give it to yourselves. Emotional support, physical support, give it to yourself. Then give each other affirmation. Don't stop thanking each other. Don't stop appreciating each other. It is so, so important. Don't worry. Never, never let your spouse ever wonder if he or she is enough. Don't let them ever get to that point where they're wondering, am I good enough? So make sure you do that. Then give each other compliments. You know, things, you get to a level, couples get to a level, ah, oh my, fine. What's happening today? Sometimes I tease my wife. One day, we live on the redemption camp. My wife was going somewhere. I said, Coco, 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 where are you going to like this? He said, I'm just going, you're just going just down there. And you have finished the whole dressing in the whole house. Just down there. But what am I trying to say? Is to say that you look beautiful. Find nice ways to look, to say it. You know, these days you hear things like, ah, ah, I was looking through the book of numbers and I realized I didn't have your number. <laughs> he said, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing here? I thought angels were in heaven. I didn't know one has been reassigned to me. Look for nice things. Say it to yourself and say it repeatedly. So, you know, give the compliments. And finally, forgive each other forgive what god forgive each other you need to understand that there are times when you may intentionally and unintentionally hurt yourselves there will be times trust me you to be intentional there will be times when it will be what unintentional but one thing must happen it is forgiveness forgiveness is done by one person but the peace of forgiveness is enjoyed by both parties forgiveness is done by who one person. But who enjoys the peace? Both parties. You know, sometimes you choose not to forgive somebody and you expect the person to be hurt. It's like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die. When you forgive your partner, it's for your own sake. It's for your own good. When you forgive, it's for your own peace, for your own sanity. And I pray God will help you in Jesus' name. As I conclude, let me all remind, let me all remind everyone here, there's a wedding that we'll hold very soon. 
and it's the wedding with the groom himself, the ultimate groom, and his name is Jesus Christ. They have said yes to themselves today, and what you have said or have not said has already concluded your eternity. So if you don't say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you have not said yes to our Lord Jesus Christ, it means that you have already decided your eternity. But while we still have that choice today to determine that you are going to spend eternity with Jesus Christ in his kingdom. I mean, Jesus says to us that he is taking us back to a place where the streets are paved with gold. It's not like Nigerian roads. It's not Jaga Jaga Road. Wouldn't you want to go to that place where the streets are paved with gold? Don't you want to be, go to that place where the sun, never, the sun never sets? Because the person we are going to be married to, he is himself the son of righteousness. Don't you want to go to that place where it's going to be light all true? We're going to worship for the rest of our lives. You see what the choir just did? That's what all of us will be doing. And it's going to be wonderful. The devil will be subjected permanently. But only those who have said yes to the Lord Jesus are those who are going to make it to that place. Just in case, while all heads are bowed and all eyes are closed, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, that marriage is the most important marriage that all of us are going to experience. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I like to say, just say after me, Heavenly Father, today I come before you admitting that I am a sinner, I confess my sins before you and I repent of my sins. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my life. I want to reign with you when you come. I want to be married to you on that last day and I want to be in your kingdom. From today, I forsake all my sins and I accept you totally as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. If you just said that prayer, you've become born again. I don't want you to go away without seeing any of our ushers. Please make sure you meet with any of our ushers. They'll take it further from there. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Once again, we ask that this wedding that has begun today, which is the beginning of a journey, we ask, oh Lord, that this journey will not be a regrettable one in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will keep the couple safe in the name of Jesus. Any demonic, any evil interference, you keep it away from them in the name of Jesus. This will be a sweet union in the name of Jesus. They will enjoy each other in the name of Jesus. God will always tabernacle in their home in the name of Jesus. And their joy will know no bound in the name of Jesus. We decree you are fruitful in the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed.